Hi, this is Jackson Rogers, also known as Lenny Agony on the Polycount forums and the Steam Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how I paint my color map directly onto my high poly in Mudbox using a concept image much like this one here. So uh, a guy by the name of Double Leaf or Bell uh, made this concept for me and it's really great and as you can see I have my final high poly here in the viewport and what I'm going to do is use a stencil to project this directly onto my high poly using PTEX which I can then bake down to my low poly and it's a pretty easy and I found it pretty handy process so to get started you're going to need to set up PTEX on your object. Uh, this one has 14 objects that are associated with it so I'm going to have to do it to all of them and to set up PTEX you need to be at the lower subdivision levels. So to do that select uh, all of your objects from the object list like this and just page down until they're all at zero. And now you need to go through and set PTEX up on every individual object. Which you can do like this. You just go to UVs, PTEX setup, and I just leave it as the default. Now that you have PTEX set up on all of your objects, you can up the subdivision levels again, which should help when you're painting. And from here, add your stencil. In the stencil tabs. And if you select your stencil over on the bottom here, the new one you've just imported, it'll come up on the screen. Uh, what I found also that was important is to make sure that you're directly on the front view and you can get that by clicking on the view square here, the top right, and then line your stencil over the top of your high poly. And you can do this by following the controls down on the bottom left. That looks close enough. So now if you go to paint tools and projection and just click on one object through, it'll ask you to set up a paint layer, just do OK. And this should set up paint layers on all of your objects, which you can see if you go to the layers tab and paint. So if you then go through and select separate objects, you can see that they all have a paint layer. So back down in paint tools, if you use projection, you can just paint straight through your concept and it will project it onto your high poly like this. And you can see where some of the detail doesn't line up exactly. Uh, and this can come from, you know, it's quite difficult to line up your sculpt, but most of it's pretty close. And you can always update it once you're done, which I'll show you in a second.
and that should do it if you just press Q to turn off your map you can see it's painted through and if you press shift L to turn the specular off you can see flat shaded and the concept is actually not too bad you're always going to have these issues on the seams here but they're pretty easy to fix uh, to do that you can just use the eyedropper and select a color that's close you want to make sure you have the paintbrush selected before you use the eyedropper select a color and then you can just paint to fix any seams that you have or make any adjustments that you want like I'll have to up here where the uh, where some of this detail doesn't match up and in some of the cracks where it just doesn't quite match up but pretty close and there are a few other tools you can use down here like the blur tool to help blend some of the painting in uh, dodge is okay too give yourself some highlights if you want a lot of darkened areas but uh, what I'm going to do now is load a mesh where I have finished painting out all of the issues So once you've painted in all of the updates and fixed up any problems you have with the tools down below with the paintbrush or the smudge or the clone stamp or whatever you want to use, uh, you should end up with something like this. And it's from here that I import low, my low poly with my UVs and I'll bake them down. So import your low poly which I've exported from 3 Studio Max or whatever piece of software you're using and it needs to have the final UV maps or UV unwraps. So it's probably going to look a little bit funky when you first import it, but that's okay. As you can see, it's just covered in the PTEX So now you want to go to UV maps, extract texture maps, new operation, transfer paint layers, and you want to add selected, which is if you have your low poly selected, and then add all and remove your low poly. So you have your low poly in the target and you have your, your high poly sculpt in the source model. I don't think we need any of this stuff. I have it set to ray casting, all paint layers, and extract. This will take a little bit. If you have an error come up at this point, it's because one of your high poly objects does not have PTEX set up correctly. You need to make sure that all of your all of your sculpted meshes have a PTEX base. Otherwise, uh, you'll have an error and it won't allow you to to bake. So just make sure all of all of your source high poly objects have PTEX and your low has its UVs. Okay, that ended up taking about 15-20 minutes to bake down, mostly because I have about 14 objects in the scene, but now that it's baked down, you can see that the low poly has some pretty good colour maps. I'm now going to hide my high poly mesh 
I just find it easier to use the object list. You can just hide it from display. I'll press H. And then you can see there are always a few little small areas that have errors from the bake. And it's pretty easy to just go back in here and fix them up with the paint tool. And so on until it looks exactly as you like. And you can go through and do some small adjustments if you want. And once I'm finished doing any kind of cleanup, I just select my low poly, go to file and export all paint layers. And you can just set them to whatever you want. Uh, what do I got here? And it'll just export. to a TGA. You can also export a PSD or a couple other file types. And once that's finished exporting all your paint layers, you just go to Photoshop and open up your color map. And there you have it. If you need to make any changes, you can always make them here and my box has a really nice way of transferring back and forth PSD files, but this works perfectly fine. Anyway, I hope that's uh, helpful to at least someone and if you have any questions, feel free to look me up under Lenny Agony on Steam. Happy to uh, answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.